What's up, everybody? Coming to you here shooting Raspberry Pi for Dummies Part 2. In this video, we're going to learn a few things. We're going to learn how to connect your system to Wi-Fi, how to connect a Bluetooth controller, and also how to make your left analog stick work permanently so you don't have to reset it up every time you go into a game in a RetroArch menu like I showed you in the last video. Um, so to do this, we're going to hop back out. We're going to use Emulation Station as our front end. Um, we'll, we'll go back and, and do some uh, a track mode stuff in a later video. But in the meantime, if you're running out of a track mode, you can go into a track mode setup and switch to Emulation Station and follow this video, and that'll get you by. Um, so what you want to do in Emulation Station is hop over to RetroPie. Depending on your theme setup, it may say Configure instead, but you want to get to this. Um, drill down on that, and the very last option over here says Wi-Fi. This is pretty easy, uh, kind of hard to miss if, if you didn't, unless you uh, didn't know where the, the actual setup was, but notice where it says wireless ESSID right above where I'm highlighting, it's blank. Uh, just take note of that, you'll know you're connected to your network because it'll tell you the name of your network right there when we're done. So you're going to select option one, select your network, go ahead and type in your uh, uh, ID code for your network. Type that in real quick. You are going to need a keyboard for this. Could be USB wired, wireless, doesn't matter, but you need to do that because if you notice when I was typing, it's all X's, so you can't, you know, you can't like select like a, there's no pop up keyboard or anything like that. Um, so you see now wireless ESSID says the name of my network. I know I'm connected. From that point on, every time you boot up your Pi, it's going to automatically connect to your your Wi-Fi. Um, if you take it to a buddy's house and you connect to their Wi-Fi. And when you bring it back, then you have to reset it up. But no big deal. You see how simple that is. So um, you'll need that for Cody and whatnot. Uh, now we're going to learn how to connect a Bluetooth controller. So we're still in the RetroPie menu. And the second option down says Bluetooth. We're just going to drill down on that. Um, for the particular controller I have, which is a Matricom, um, there's a few things with this that I'll cover. But um, the main thing is you want to put your controller in the seek mode. Um, it could be a PS4 controller, those work pretty well. Uh, there is a way to do PS3s, those are a little more complicated, so I'm not going to cover those in this video. Um, but you're going to select option 1 after you put your controller in seek mode. To do it on my particular controller, I'm going to hold the X button and then press the power button. And mine has these four LED lights, they're going to flash very rapidly. And that's how I know it's in seek mode. So while that's happening, I'm going to select the first option, register and connect. And you can see the system's in search mode. If it doesn't pick up the first time, no sweat. It's a little finicky. It could take one to three times. Um, I've connected this one before, so I guess my system knows to look for it. So it popped up there, Bluetooth gamepad. Um, this other serial number, I have no idea what that is. It pops up. It could be other, you know, some other device floating around my house. Um, my experience, whatever you're trying to connect, you'll know it in the title. It won't be some random serial ID number. So I'm going to go ahead and select Bluetooth gamepad. And this just is basically asking what type of device it is in a nutshell. And it says try the first option. If that doesn't work, try the second one. I've never had a controller not be the first option if it's like a keyboard or something. Um, I think option two works when I, I did do that one time. Um, my, my experience as well, the, um, the USB receiver keyboards are better. Uh, the Bluetooth ones tend to fall asleep a lot and you get a lot of lag and stuff like that. So my controller is vibrating now because it, as it says on the screen, successfully connected. So go ahead and press OK. Now, a couple things here. Once you get back to this menu after you press OK, hit a button on your controller. Hit the, the up and down buttons on your D-pad. And if it doesn't navigate the menu, then you need to go to option U. And this says uh, set up undev, I guess it's undeveloped role for a joypad. Um, go ahead and click that and then select the, the device you're connecting. I already did mine, so it says an entry already exists. If it's the first time for you, you're going to get a screen. It does. It kind of like zips through. It looks like it glitches for a second, and then it's going to say it's all set up to activate it, perform a reboot. So let's pretend that just happened. So we're back to this screen. We're going to hit escape, get out of this. It's going to take us back to the emulation station retro pie menu. You're going to press start on your keyboard or whatever you already have set up. And you're going to go to quit and restart system. 
So once your system reboots, it's going to bring you back to Emulation Station. You want to go ahead and press Start again and go to Configure Input. Are you sure? Yes. And it says One Gamepad Detected. That's my Bluetooth controller. So I'm going to hold down any button on my Bluetooth controller and it's going to take you to this screen. So on the left, this is a basic configuration screen. If you haven't done this before, that's fine. It's, it's very simple. On the left, it, it has a list of uh, commands. And on the right, it's asking you to assign a button to that command. So my controller has everything. Um, every controller you have is really going to have a D-pad. That's just your directions. Um, so up, down, left, right. I'm pressing that on my D-pad corresponding. Um, start select buttons, A and B, X, Y. Shoulders, triggers. Your left and right thumb is just clicking down on your analog stick. That counts as a button too. And then left analog, down, left, right. All right, I think I skipped something here. If you mess up, it's not that in the world. Take your keyboard, press the up arrow, go back. And you can reconfigure it. So I skipped one before I skipped the up on my analog and didn't realize it. So left analog, up, down, left, right. Right analog, same thing. So at this point, your controller, your Bluetooth controller should be working right now instantaneously. B button will go back. You should be able to operate the menus. So that's, that's what I had to do for this one. But then what was infuriating me was I would go into any game for any system and my controller wouldn't work inside of the games. And that was driving me nuts. So I did a lot of digging online and uh, someone was nice enough to... Uh, to explain something to me. So if that's your case, you want to go into configuration editor. And it's going to take us to another one of those blue screens. You want to select option two, advanced configuration, option one, and option one again. Then you're going to scroll all the way down to number 27. It actually reads, in case it's a different number on your script, it's going to read input joypad driver. In parentheses, it's going to say unset or, or udev, whatever. Just click on that. For my particular controller, this works, SD12. For your controller, it could be any one of these. It's really just a trial and error. But the key thing is, if you compare your controller to the system, you can get it to work in the menus, but you can't get it to work inside of the games. You just have to do this and figure out which one of these options work. Like I said, for mine, it's SD12, so I'm going to pair it to that. And then, to make sure your left analog stick will work inside of any game you go into. So if you go on Nintendo, you don't want to use the D-pad. You want the left analog without doing RetroArch every single time. Scroll down a little further in the same menu. It's number 37. It says Input Player 1 Analog D-pad Mode. And it says Unset. So you click on that, and you just set it the left stick. If you want it the right stick... I think you're weird, but that's fine. I'm going to set mine to left stick. Um, input player 2. This is just if you have multiple controllers selected, you can do that for all of them. I'm actually going to do it for player 2, just in case. It's already set up. So, there you have it. Um, we covered how to connect the Wi-Fi if you don't want to do an Ethernet plugin. How to connect the Bluetooth controller. A couple troubleshooting things that are fairly common. And how to set up your left analog stick. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, or comments, I should say, just uh, go ahead and leave it below. I'll, I'll answer everything I can. Appreciate it if you guys would like, uh, like, and subscribe and share. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.